Good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Guatemala. Guatemala is located in the more northern corner of Central America. It has this big, long, long border here with Mexico, which we'll talk a little bit about in its history. You can tell whenever there's straight lines that either something major happened or there's just nothing there to claim, which in this case is kind of both. Also, there's this big border here with Belize and a border with Honduras and El Salvador. And Guatemala borders both oceans. Technically, it has this long, beautiful coastline on the Pacific, and it has this little border, border, this little bit here in the Gulf of Honduras, the Caribbean. Guatemala lies within the Pacific Ring of Fire, so the most dominant part of its landscape are its mountains can see this is part of the Sierra Madre mountain chain that basically just sweeps through Guatemala right through here. And there are many, many volcanoes in this chain. There's about 20, but only around three possibly are still active. And you can really see just how flat this coastline is right here. And it just goes right up into the big, big mountains. The biggest mountain see if I can point it out here. It's right over here by San Marcos. It's called Tajumulco. And it's a, oh goodness, I just blanked on the name of it. It's a special kind of volcano that's tall enough that it, uh, a strato volcano. There it is. <laughs> that's, I like that name a lot. It's really cool. So it looks more like a mountain, I suppose, but it's actually a volcano. I believe it's one of the extinct ones. If I remember my notes and things. So the capital city is right here. It is Guatemala City. It is one of what I call like the nice capitals. When you start off your geography learning journey, always start with the easy capitals or the nice capitals. So the capital of Guatemala is Guatemala City. Done. Got it. Excellent. You'll know it for life now. Guatemala City, as you can see, is right in the middle of these huge beautiful mountains. Kind of like how we talked about with El Salvador, my last country, all the major cities are located near volcanoes because that's where the soil is the most fertile. So the city is located within the, the mountains here. There's also this big lake right here called Lake Atitlan. And from what I can tell in researching, this is like the big tourist lake. Like here in Northern California, we have Lake Tahoe. Like everyone goes to Lake Tahoe in the summer to enjoy the water, in the winter to ski. And it's just like the lake where everyone goes. I think this is the lake where everyone goes. But there is also this big lake up here called Lake Izibal. And it's pretty big. It's really huge. Um, but I think like this is the big tourist one because it's closest to the major like city center here in Guatemala City. Most of the rivers flowing through Guatemala flow into Lake Isabel right here. But going away from the mountains, we have this big chunk up here. And this area is called the Peten. And essentially, this is all thick, thick jungle rainforest full of like jaguars and monkeys and all those wonderful rainforest animals. The biggest, most important city in this area is Flores right here. It's located in the middle of Lake Petanitsa and it's on an island in the middle of the lake. And this is essentially where a lot of eco-tourists and tourists like me who want to see archaeological sites would start in Flores and then go out into the jungle to explore because right about here or so was the largest Mayan city of Tikal, which um, you're going to see a lot of pictures of in this book after I go over the history. And tomorrow's video is going to be all about Tikal and the Mayans. So this area in particular was very Mayan dominated, but all of Guatemala today was part of the Mayan Empire, and there were many, many different cities 
some of which are still being discovered today. I'll talk about that in the history a little bit. Um, you know, why don't we just dive right into the history? I think, I think that's a good starting point. Um, so, the first humans would have arrived about 12,000 BCE or so. And the Mayans really dominated the region in its early years. There are many different um, ethnic groups in this area, but the Mayans were by far like the biggest, the most powerful. They loved to war with each other. It was like just a part of their life was just to war. And uh, they really hit their peak around 900 CE. That's when they started building their major cities. And they had, you know, like really advanced languages, writing, calendars, mathematics, astronomy, all those things until they didn't and it just very suddenly abruptly stopped and they abandoned their cities and left them to be swallowed up by the forest. The Mayan people are still very much around today in Guatemala um, but you know they don't live out in like rock temples like they did back in the 900s right? They're just regular people. Um, but I was actually watching on Disney Plus. They have a, a, a cool show that talks about in the National Geographic part of it, of course, how they're using LiDAR technology to basically fly drones over the jungle in Guatemala to take like LiDAR pictures, like basically like scanning the forest and, and taking big old pictures. And it's really neat to watch them like to show a picture of the jungle and all you see is the tree canopy and just trees, trees, trees. And then they can digitize out the trees and you just see a whole Mayan city. Just right underneath the trees that no one would ever know was there. So there are still things being uncovered today in the forest here, the Paten. It's really interesting. Um, it's one of those archaeological histories that will most likely never be solved as to what happened to the Mayans, why they abandoned all of their cities. But um, like I said in the Costa Rica episode, I, I don't want to know. I think it's cooler just to let it be and just let history have that one and just let us explore and uncover and, and learn all that we can about them. One of the interesting things I was reading was, this might be in the book I'm reading tomorrow, Hmm, not sure where I read this fact, but um, it was about how, I think it is in the book, how people used to believe when they were starting to uncover artifacts that they were a peaceful people, and as they uncovered more and more artifacts, they found that that was like the opposite of what was true. They were very warlike people, but they were not a real warlike threat. By 1519, when the Spanish arrived in what is now today Guatemala, the man who led the basic like invasion takeover of the area was Pedro de Alvarado. He teamed up with the Cacchiquel people because they were fighting against their enemies, the Quiche people. And the Quiche put up a very huge admirable fight against the Spanish, but very sadly they lost. They just didn't have the technology to counter like guns and things like that. And uh, the Spanish, of course, would betray the Cacchiquel later on. <laughs> they took over all of their land, right? So the territory became part of New Spain, their colony, or as they called it, an audiencia, which kind of meant that it was like the, the head colony of all their other colonies here. And they had some difficulties with their capital cities at first. Um, they started off down in this area here, um, but their city was attacked by the Cacchiquel, so they relocated to, I believe, by the coast over here. I think it was near Puerto Barrios. Um, but a volcano nearby during a storm, the caldera flooded and sent mudslides down and destroyed the city. So then they relocated it to the city of Antigua, um, which is like a very historical city nowadays. Think like, um, excuse the car out there, think like a, a historical city like like Jamestown is to America, things like that. A very, like, where all the colonial buildings are built, but it was destroyed in an earthquake. Because, like I said, Guatemala sits within that ring of fire zone, so it's very, very seismically active. Guatemala's had quite a few very, very devastating earthquakes. I think it was the 1970s that the last really horrifying one was in 
um, but they're also um, just where they're positioned in the world. They get hit by hurricanes, but the main threat of the hurricanes is the flooding and the landslides, not so much the rain because of all the mountains, you know, not to mention the volcanoes, you know, that's kind of a threat as well. Uh, but after Antigua was destroyed in the earthquake, they relocated to what is now Guatemala City and it's, it's had its fair share of natural disasters, but not so much that they've had to relocate the capital again. So the, the Spanish had some issues over in Spain, neglected their colonies, so they declared their independence on September 15th, 1821. And they created a union with Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica to create was basically like a United States of Central America. They had a big tiff with Mexico because Mexico wanted to take over their country. Guatemala said no. So they basically had to agree to disagree on slicing up the parts that they both wanted. And um, eventually that union collapsed. And in 1847, Guatemala declared its own independent status as a republic. Now, uh, the politics in Guatemala, my goodness, especially the early politics, what a soap opera. I mean, it's almost like uh, War of the Roses slash Game of Thrones level of just intense political drama. But in a nutshell, uh, the, the two big parties, right? You had the conservatives, which was backed by the Catholic Church. There was no separation. They were basically one and the same. And then the liberals, who didn't want controlled by the Catholic Church, right? Not that they were against Catholicism or religion or anything, they just didn't believe that the Catholics should be pulling the strings, right? So eventually what would happen was one party would be in control, the other party would be unhappy and do something so that they would wind up in control, that they would be unhappy and do something, so on and so forth. So let's say like the liberals are in power, which means that they're focusing on like the poor and infrastructure and improving education, but the rich people are making less money because of it, because the money to do all that is coming out of their pockets. So they stage like a coup or a military junta. So then they're in power and then they're so strong in power that the people are being oppressed. So then they protest and rise up and revolt and there's another, and then they're back in power. You know, Pretty much that throughout Guatemala's entire history to this point. So to go over each and every one would be a, a, a bit overwhelming, to be honest, because a lot happened. Like I said, it was very, very dramatic. Um, but it is important to note that the real power behind both political parties was called the United Fruit Company. And I did talk about them when I covered El Salvador, right? El Salvador, Costa Rica. Anyway, they control all of it. Um, they were a U.S.-run fruit company that mainly grew bananas. And they, of course, had that American coin, right? Making the country profitable, making the rich people in the country even richer, making the poor people in the country even poorer. So the United Fruit Company was essentially pulling all the strings in Guatemala, no matter which party was in control. And, um, you know, there, there were some moments where you know, a, a positive leader would come forward and then that would get squashed pretty quickly because that American coin was more important. Um, that cycle really came to a head in 1944 in what's known as the Guatemalan Revolution. So it was a conservative moment where Jorge Ubico was in power. He was removed from office during the protests there, and after the dust settled, because this was also during World War II, you know, um, a man named Jacobo Arbenz Guzman was elected, and he was very liberal, right? And he supported a lot of, like, rebels and freedom fighters, which made the U.S., who had a lot of financial stock in Guatemala, very nervous at this time in history, because they didn't really like people who were supporting guerrillas and all that. They basically figured, well, that's a communist person, right? Especially since Cuba's just right over there, too. Very, very nervous for the United States. Um, and not to mention, the United Fruit Company was losing money, so the CIA got involved and started planning a military coup against the government, 
and Arbenz realized that he was basically going to get taken out by the U.S. government, so he resigned. And this led to a big, I want to say like a cycle, but it was more of like an escalation of military takeovers, where when strong military leader would take over and then the next one would be even stronger and take over the next one would be even stronger and take over this led to guerrilla fighters getting more and more riled up and angry as their rights were being taken away bit by bit by bit by bit until it was very clear that they were going to be um to put this in a relaxing way um removed from existence by the secret police It geared up into what's now known as the Guatemalan Civil War, which was the longest civil war in Central America. It lasted from 1960 to 1996. And it was a very rough one. I mean, there's no calm civil wars, right? They're, they're always pretty rough. Um, about 140,000, or possibly a higher number than that, lost their lives or just went missing. They were disappeared. About a million people had to flee from their homes during it. And then, of course, you know, the people caught in the middle between the guerrilla fighters and the government soldiers are the, the regular everyday people. And caught in between that are the native people, in particular the um, Quiche people, and the Mayan people, everyone in between. But the Quiche um, had a really rough time of it. Um, there was a woman named, or there is, she's still alive. Her name is Rigoberta Menchu, who really spoke out for the rights of the Quiche natives in Guatemala during the Civil War, and she won the Nobel Peace Prize because of her efforts. Um, and later, one of the dictators that was in charge during the Civil War went on trial for uh, genocide allegations against the Quiche people, and he was found guilty and basically sentenced to prison for life. He was sentenced to like 80 years, but he was already very, very old at that point, and he died in prison. So yeah, it was a very, very rough time, definitely in particular for the native people of Guatemala. So the governments that came in to try to like rebrand this country, you know, um, have not been the best. Um, pretty much every administration since then has been pretty corrupt. In particular, in 2015, there was a huge corruption scandal that was called La Linea, which means like the telephone line, because that's how um, they figured out what was going on. And it was pretty involved. So to put it in a nutshell, the government had essentially turned the tax and administration's office into a criminal organization. And basically, someone in the government was running the government as like a crime syndicate, like a crime syndicate from within the government. And once investigators got in there and figured out who was running this, it was the president and vice president, like, that came from the top. So that was pretty insane. They were obviously removed from office. That's pretty, pretty corrupt. Um, the administration since then, I mean, since the Civil War, like I said, it was either like very, very, very aggressively liberal or very, very aggressively conservative. Right now it's more on the conservative end of things. The newest president was sworn in in 2020, so it's still, um, you know, to see what's going on in his administration. We'll, uh, you know, find out, especially, you know, becoming president in January 2020 is really bad timing. But in a nutshell, that is history of Guatemala. So let me show you some beautiful pictures of this really fantastic country. I think. Yeah, so, starting off with Tikal. So this is the big grand pyramid in Tikal. Again, tomorrow my whole video is going to be all about Tikal. So you'll find out who built this pyramid and why and what it was used for. Here it is a bit zoomed out. This is the pyramid right here, but this was the whole city right well, not the whole city was way bigger than this. It's just zoomed out of this area. A really beautiful, like a ceramic cup, it looks like, with some art on it. Really lovely. Here's a political map of Guatemala. You can see all the big cities here, and you can even see the Tikal Park right up here. Some of the ancient Maya cities as well. 
There's a big, beautiful jaguar. Looking at something, isn't he? Here's a Spanish, Spanish soldier on his horse. He kind of looks like Don Quixote. And this is a Mayan woman. And currently they're known for their very beautiful textiles. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this is the lake I was telling you about, Lake Atitlan, which I believe from everything I read is like the big vacation hotspot in Guatemala. Absolutely gorgeous forest. You can see the big volcanoes, beautiful lakes. Very gorgeous. Here's the coastline. And here is a physical map. So look at all the volcanoes right through there, through the mountains and then the flat pitten because it's all rainforest and jungle. And here is a river where there was a jade rush. The Mayans really loved their jade. You know, the Spanish came here looking for gold. And there really wasn't any, but they had a lot of jade. Here is some of the devastation from the 1976 earthquake. It was really, really a bad one, especially in the middle of their civil war, you know. The last thing they need. A beautiful rural area. It looks very peaceful. Let's see. An active volcano. Bubbling, bubbling. This is Santiago. And this is really cool. So this is a fort built along Lake Isabel. And the Spanish built it to keep away pirates, which um, I didn't really research that much into it. But I was like, why? I mean, it's sort of near the coast, but not really. Why did they build a castle by this lake to deter pirates? But there's apparently like shipwrecks and stuff from the pirates at the bottom of this lake. So something was going down. I should look into that. This is Lake Atitlan, very gorgeous. Even kind of looks like Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe had volcanoes instead of skiing mountains. And the beautiful rainforest from above. So like this was like the pictures I was telling you about how you get a picture and all you see is trees and then they just digitally remove them and it's just a whole city right there. It's a really interesting show. It's one of their mini series. Anyway, one of the many rivers. Is this the one? I believe that's like up here. Is it that one? I believe so. Along the border of Mexico. And look at that's Tikal. You know, on my community tab, I do um, little picture spoilers so you can guess what country's coming up next. And I really wanted to find a picture like this where you see the forest and then just like a tiny little pyramid in the distance. But I did my best. I like playing that game with you guys. I like to see what you guys think. Some of you come up with it really quickly. So this is Quetzaltenango. It is the big, um, it has the largest quiche population in Guatemala. And this is Flores. Like I told you, it is on an island in the middle of the lake. And you can see some of that Spanish architecture. It's very beautiful. This is a big tree. This is a ceiba tree. And this is a cactus, a big old cactus, it's its scientific name, the big old cactus, the cloud forest, and here's some sweet tape here, they're so cute. And here's a very cute little howler monkey, he looks a little perplexed right there. And here's the national bird, the quetzal, their long beautiful tails, tail feathers I should say gorgeous rainforest, all thick, jungly, impenetrable, full of mysteries. A Muscovy duck. <laughs> and some little newborn baby sea turtles hatching out of their eggs and running, running, running toward the ocean. Look at this statue on the side of a building somewhere. It says this is, oh, it's a reproduction carving. Anyway, it's still very beautiful. It says this is in, um, Piedras Negras. Yeah, okay. And this is some um, Mayan art, it says. So here's a map of the Mayan world. So this is Guatemala. And here's all the major cities. Um, the main ones, of course, being Tikal, Copan, where to go, Calakmul, Palenque. We'll learn about 
all of those as these weeks go on, especially when we get to Mexico-ish. Actually, I'm going to talk more about the Aztecs when we get to Mexico, but anyway, very important mind cities. Here's one of their calendars. Isn't that gorgeous? Predicting all kinds of things like eclipses and planetary movements that were spot on. Because um, I always tell people astro astronomy is very simple math, honestly. It's very easy to calculate things. An engraving of what Guatemala City used to look like back in the day. So this is a map of the United Provinces of Central America. Like I told you, they tried to unify all this area into one big country, but didn't quite work out. Alright, this is Justo Rufino Barrios. He was one of the very liberal leaders. This is Manuel Estrada Cabrera, one of the very conservative dictator leaders. Banana Republic. Now you know where that term comes from, right? Jorge Obiso. Obico. I just forgot. Obico. Like, one of the worst dictators. And here is Jacobo Arbenz, who was one of the liberal ones. He was the one that the CIA overthrew. And here's Rigoberta Menchu, native rights activist. And here is a um, UN peacekeeper or an observer meeting some guerrillas outside the National Palace. Very nice uniform there. And here is the national flag of Guatemala. Guatemala's national flag has three vertical bands. The bands on the sides are blue. The one in the middle is white. The blue stands for the Caribbean Sea and Pacific Ocean. The national coat of arms is in the middle of the white band with a quetzal symbolizing freedom. That's a long tail feather. A pair of crossed rifles and crossed swords represent the defense of liberty, and a scroll bears the inscription. Uh-oh. I don't know my Spanish numbers past 12. Anyway, the, the liberty on September 15th, 1821. <laughs> the date of Guatemalan independence. Now, I learned a lot of Spanish from Sesame Street when I was little, and they only taught up to 12 in English and Spanish, so I can count at 12 in Spanish like nobody's business, but after that, it's a little tricky. Some members of the Supreme Court being sworn in. Yeah, this is the National Palace, which is basically the White House of Guatemala. And here's a map of the like downtown civic area. You can see up here is the Central Park, Park Central, where the National Palace is located. Here's a really beautiful farm. It's so lovely. And sadly, these people are evacuating after a hurricane came through and created some mudslides. So it's a very beautiful countryside, but with its risks, right? Look at this. So there's just people toiling away in their field with this incredible view right there. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's their currency. It's the Quetzal. And this guy's got some bananas that are getting shipped off, most likely to like the U.S. And this guy's planting some coffee seedlings because that's another big export in Guatemala. Here's their resources map. You can see all the crops that are grown down here. Nothing really much grows up here except oil. That's where the oil grows. <laughs> And here's some people checking out the Big Step Pyramid in Tikal. It's one of my dreams is to climb that. That in Chichen Itza. And, you know, I'm always jealous of people that live in like these beautiful, beautiful places. It's just their everyday lives. It's just a normal day for them, but so absolutely gorgeous, right? And here's some newspapers just to show you what the language looks like in Guatemala. They speak Spanish. Look at this wonderful face. And here are some people wearing some of their native clothes, traditional clothes. And this is a Kakchikau person of their descent, next to their beautiful fabrics. 
And here are some Mayan people wearing their beautiful textile fabrics. And here's a population map. You can see the majority of people living down in this corner and getting more and more dispersed as you go out from there. Here they're doing a ceremony for the Mayan New Year. And these people are Garifuna, so they are descendants from the Africans that were brought to the area by the Spaniards to work the plantations. They live along the Caribbean coast. And here's a language map, because they don't just speak one language in the Mayan culture, there's quite a few. So you can see um, where many different people speak certain languages and dialects. This is Rosalina Tsuyuk, the first Mayan congresswoman. And look at this. This is one of the big cathedrals. Actually, I think it's like the big cathedral because I recognize this facade. I think it's like the biggest cathedral, the most famous one. And this is a priestess, it says. That's cool. Market in Chichi Castanango. And some delicious. What are you picking out? I want some of these apples. Yum, yum, those look good. I get some beautiful flowers too. And it says this is a religious ritual happening here. And praying at Mass. And this is apparently a traditional dance, which you would never catch me doing anything like that. It looks terrifying. An Easter celebration. They're dressed all the way, full costume there. And look at this, this festival is called the Quema de Diablo. They cast out the devils. Those are very cool masks. Here's some tamales, the national dish. And this statue is called the Black Christ. It apparently performs miracles. So many people have pilgrimages to see the statue. That's why it's behind glass there. And they're having some prayers right there. Playing the marimba. Ding, 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 ding. Look at this. This is a, a funeral urn, a burial urn. Isn't that remarkable? Look at that craftsmanship in that. That would be so cool. I kind of want to have an urn like that someday. It's a little morbid, but you know what I mean. So this is a famous author, Miguel Angel Astorias. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature. It's a famous artist, Carlos Merida. And we have a painting here. This is by Juan Cisse. Very expressive, right? Almost Van Gogh-like with the thick outlines. I like that. Celebrating Dia de los Muertos. So a lot of cultures in Central America celebrate this holiday, but in pretty different ways. So it looks like here in Guatemala, they dress up, go to their loved ones' graves, leave some flowers, and reminisce. And doing some weaving there by hand. Very beautiful. Some of the gorgeous embroidery in their clothes. Isn't that lovely? And some more absolutely gorgeous textiles here. So oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. And look at this. So this is a holiday called um, Dance of the Conquest, or this is the, the dance that they do on this holiday. Um, but it honors how um, Tecun Uman fought against Pedro de Alvarado. Tecun Uman is like one of the big, big heroes in Guatemala because he stood up against the Spanish and fought them off to the bitter end playing some more marine butts. And of course, football is a huge, huge sport. This is Carlos Ruiz. Having a big kick there. Oh, gathering some wood for the day. Working very hard. And there's their chicken yard. It kind of looks like my landlady's chicken yard. <laughs> Her chicken yard is much nicer. And it's pretty big. But, um, yeah, chickens are, they're pretty dirty. They make messes, and they don't clean up after themselves. Tending to their field. It's a really beautiful picture. So this is in Chichi Castanango. 
and they have a very beautiful famous graveyard to see it. It's a very very colorful place. Oh, oh he's getting his vaccinations. Oh, honey, it'll be over soon. Don't worry. They're working hard in school. She's making some tortillas. Yum, yum. Have you ever seen a basket full of black beans as big as this? That's a lot of black beans. And I love this photograph. You know, this book has some really cool photographs in it, hasn't it? Um, I like this. The people, they got their goat. It's like a market day. They're negotiating. She's got her baby. That's a great picture. Look at this one. I like this one too. That looks like he's selling some like potatoes, some kind of vegetables. Um, <laughs> he's counting his money and he's like, do you want anything? How much? Oh, no, I'll pay you that. <laughs> and um, here are some soldiers talking to some native people. Still a lot of scars and wounds to heal, but um, you know, it's something that takes time, right? We'll end it there, like I said. I can't wait for this video. Oh my gosh, about Tikal. It's so incredible. You're going to learn so much. It's such a great book. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out, because you don't want to miss this one, I promise you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational, and I do hope that you have a very good, 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 good night.